From NBC Studios in Burbank, it's James Arnold Taylor, Rob Eisenberg, and Louise Palanker on the couch. Now, here's the star of the show, Fritz Coleman. Hey. Welcome to the couch, folks, where we have a sofa full of people who have no business giving other humans advice, but mm -hmm. insist on doing it anyway. That's right. <laughs> just like life. Let's just take a moment to meet our, our non-experts. Here they are. Hi. On the left, hey, we have James Arnold Taylor. Hello, James. Hey, how's it Good going? Good to see you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> James is sort of Opie with an edge. Yes. That's what we like to think of. And, and you know, Fritz, Aunt B's death was no accident. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So that's the flavor of the show. Right? <laughs> and next we have Rob Iceman Eisenberg. Good to see you, Rob. Hello, Fritz. How are you? Hi, Mom. Anytime throughout the show, he may go, you think that's a problem? I have problems. <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? My soul is like a piece of toilet paper stuck to the shoe of life. <laughs> That's ice. And we have Louise Polanker. Hi, Wheezy. Good to see you. Hi. Good to be here. Wheezy's here, as you could guess, to tone down the testosterone on the rest of the couch. Thank you, Fritz. <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, we got a great problem tonight. There are two bombshells you can drop in a relationship. One is, honey, we've got to talk. Mm. And the other is, honey, I'm going to a bachelor party in Las Vegas. You're not coming. Oh. Yeah. So that's our first dilemma tonight. We have Russ and Lisa, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Please say hello to Lisa. Hello, madam. Hello. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. As I get a chance to uh, see your beauty, I can't imagine that anyone would fly even as locally as Las Vegas to be away from you for any period that's of time. That's a lovely sentiment. Thank so, you. <laughs> so your fiance wants to go to Las Vegas to a party. What's the problem? No, to a bachelor party. Um, the problem is, I, I never understood the concept of a bachelor party. It's like celebrating, you know, the union with your, your soulmate that you're going to spend the rest of your life with by watching naked women and possibly partaking in them. Yeah! And I just, yeah! And the yeah! Point is, I just don't get it. I have, All I, to appreciate you more. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm okay, sure. Let's understand a little about the relationship. How long have you been engaged? Two, oh, we've been engaged just a few weeks, actually. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. okay. Congratulations. It's a happy thing. No, no, no. no. Come on. no. What I mean is, that helps to understand your sensitivity yeah, about Yeah, I mean, we've been together for two years, but it, yeah, it is kind of fresh, and it's, yeah, it just doesn't really make, and especially because since I know we're getting married soon, uh, you know, his views on bachelor parties are obviously that he likes them. He's making so, notes. So, uh, yeah. He's taking so, down exactly. notes. Stripper at 10. Right. I like that. <laughs> now, why, so why is he me. so uh, gung-ho of, of going to this particular bachelor party? Um, I think just because he was invited. <laughs> so you don't think, um, you don't think it, they're going to Vegas to catch Wayne Newton mm -hmm. at the Trop and do some slots? No, I don't. No, no Susan no. Anton. Don't well, you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. do you not trust him? Um, I do. I actually trust him a lot. I don't necessarily trust the people he's going with. They, um, he's actually, this, is, this will be his second or third since we've been dating. And, um, th and what's happened at the ones before have been really, it's been really bad. How do you know? What, yeah. How do you How know? Do, what are your sources? <laughs> Tell us. Yeah. The guy that was there. Ooh. Um, yeah. And so an, what went down? Um, I just think that, that there were strippers there who were more than strippers. Check. And the, uh, the person that was getting married was more than stripped for. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was bad. And he says he was not in the room and he didn't want to be a part of it, which I actually, I, I totally believe. But did but he I tell just, you this stuff or yeah. a friend told you? So no, no, he's he the told one that told you about all this. Yeah. So that should indicate that he's a pretty good guy. I understand that. I know I, he's a great guy or so I wouldn't be marrying him. Well, the problem is that he could get caught in some body fluid crossfire. Oh, <laughs> 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 Just, I don't understand the need to go. He he's not really close with the people that are going to be there, or, well, or the person. Who's going to be there? Scum. Uh, well, he he his brother's going to be there, which he doesn't see very often, and that I understand. But is he a stripper? the person having. I, uh, just, uh, wait, wait. Is this a standoff? Is this a deal breaker? I mean, have you expressed your displeasure? It's not vehemently? a deal breaker. The only deal breaker would be is if he cheated on me while he was there. Do you have any but, reason not to trust Russ? 
Anything in your no, past? No, but I've anything? had past experiences that have nothing to do with oh, him. Oh, wow. wow. we're getting to the She's issues. Uh, yes. I've brought a little baggage to the relationship. Well, let, and, let's and regress, shall and, we? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's. I've had some things happen that have made me. You were a stripper me... at a bachelor party. And you were stiffed on a tip. Let her talk. Stop exactly. it. Uh, I just. I. I. I don't wholly trust men. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. You, oh, you, uh, I see. All right, hold on. I think what we're okay. saying is you do realize you're marrying one, right? Yeah. Because yeah. ah. yeah. if I, that doesn't work, we maybe we need mm. the two. So fly in your plan. Ah, uh, so much baggage, you need a luggage carousel. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what we have? We have to give Russ's side of the story, but we appreciate it. It's a sensitive issue with you, and thank yeah. you for being here. Now you'll step off stage oh, and we'll allow right. yeah. the couch to. Uh, yeah. Hi, Russ. How you doing? Have a seat right there. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, nice so, uh, how do these bachelor parties go? Uh, <laughs> you know, they, it, it depends on who's putting them together. Most of them I've been to have been pretty uh, benign, not much going on, but, you know, some of them do get a little wild and crazy. So, what do you think Lisa's issue is with you going to one? Uh, Lisa's issue is the guys that I'm going with. I believe that she thinks that uh, they're going to be a bad influence on me and s that I'm going to somehow break out of my regular character and do something that uh, she wouldn't like. Mm -hmm. Does she have any reason not to trust you so far? Not at all. Not Russ, at all. Russ, you slimy dog. Yeah. yeah I, I, um, but now she said she's had some problems in the past uh, with, with bachelor parties. Has she ever discussed these with you? She, not with, I don't think it's, her problem's been with bachelor parties. It's been with guys right, and, right. and trust right. Exactly. like married guys that should have commitments to their wives have, sure. have not had those commitments. Are you um, guys arguing about that? Like, when, does she really express to you truly her feelings on this? Are you guys fighting about this right now? Or, you know? Uh, it, I mean, it was kind of weird. I, I've been to a bachelor party during our relationship before. It was earlier in the relationship. And um, I just assumed this would kind of go the same way. It's the, the same situation. No, but see, now she has her claws in yeah, you. Now yeah. you're engaged. Yeah, I mean, and Get that, used to it, buddy. Hey, you know what? When we, we talked to her, she seemed a little cold as to the company you were keeping there. Does she get along with your friends? Is that an issue? Um, these friends, she doesn't know a whole lot because they live up in Oregon and she's from Los Angeles. And so she's met these guys a couple of times, but more than anything, she's heard stories go around about these guys and their past behaviors and stuff like that. Are the that. stories true? Uh, yeah. And saucy? And, and, <laughs> yes. And, All right. and a little saucy. Have you ever had anything to do with any of these stories at no, this past bachelor party? No, never. You're a central character? I've been at the bachelor parties uh -huh. where this stuff's going on, but I feel uncomfortable when that stuff's going on. It truly bothers well, you. you. Well, I know but they're... But I know. I, most of the time, I know these people's <laughs> significant others, and I don't like to be in a situation where... Uh, it makes me feel uncomfortable. So what would you do are... when all of the shenanigans were taking place? What uh, was... you know, at the last bachelor party when things started to get a little bit out of hand, yeah. it, it's Vegas. I left. You whipped I out a Scrabble and... game? And yes, we... yes, of course. Sure you well, you know what, how yeah. important is this? You've been engaged for a, a few weeks. You probably made one or two of the time payments on the diamond. You can understand <laughs> her sensitivity here. This is the beginning. This is the flush of romance. I, I understand. It's less about that and it's more about how I should be trusted. Okay. I, I feel like you know, we're getting into something where it should be open trust. This is a one chance. My brother lives in Oregon. I see him about twice a year. This is an opportunity. You know, it's 250 miles away. I can easily go see him. And uh, it's something that I want to do. And I, I, I'm more, it's more of a principal thing. I think I should be trusted. Russ, is she, is Lisa like this in other facets? One man in the audience. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. That guy right there. Yeah. We've heard both sides of the story now. It's our studio audience first opportunity to vote on which side of the argument they find themselves on. Do you agree with what Russ has to say or what Lisa has to say? We're anxious to find out what uh, your vote is and you're gonna have an opportunity to change that vote if you're so swayed later on in the program. When we come back, the couch gets to debate. Stay tuned, it gets hot from here. <laughs> Would you invite a close friend to go nightclubbing and then leave without them repeatedly? She gets me there, yeah. but then she disappears. 30 minutes, Sorry. I got about 20 guys on me saying, let's go dance. Oh. Yeah, but I don't just want to walk out with just somebody I just met. Yeah. Well, yeah. she does. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so busy drinking, she just, <laughs> Whatever. You know, she oh, so you, you tell her and she doesn't remember? Is that yeah, what you're trying to Yeah, she doesn't remember anything. I you know. have the same problem with my friends. <laughs> I'm out going to drink. <laughs> I'm a great time, right? Wednesday on the couch. <laughs> Hi, everybody, welcome back to the couch. Our friends are Russ and Lisa. The issue is a bachelor party. It's an issue because they're about to get married. 
It's so ironic to me. Before marriage, it's called a bachelor party. After marriage, it's called a business trip. <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen, yeah, yeah, well, Ooh, apparently there's some experience you. in the audience. I suppose. But, but, but really, and, and I understand her sensitivity, but isn't this an issue of it being sort of a boot camp of trust? If they establish a trust here, because there are going to be a lot of strains throughout their marriage, they have to establish a trust at this early point well, for it to be healthy. You know what? Right? It's not an early point, though, because they've been dating for two years. And, and I think that whatever trust issues were there should have been taken care of already. And, and quite frankly, I don't understand why, why Lisa is, is even worried about this. I mean, I can, I can answer why she's worried about this. When you're a guy and you're involved with a girl, you don't subject yourself to places where you could fall. Yeah, but, you could um, falter. You could slip. You could, your lips could press against another. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, wow. but, look, but look, look what's sitting there. If I had a choice between a $20 hooker and Lisa, I'd take Lisa. Wow. Oh, I want you to go. Lisa, you know, there's a classic example of why he's on the show, to be able to boil sensitive things down to a yeah. And I'll give you $30. I want to say one thing here, and this may help you guys in your in advocacy of either side of the issue. Our audience, who always has the, the pinnacle of wisdom about these issues, 30% of our audience sides with Lisa, 70% Russ. Yeah, 70% yeah. guys. 70% yeah. guys that want to go. No, there. it's about an evenly divided audience, male to female, or uh, quasi-representations of either. So yeah. anyway, Lizzie, uh, I'm curious to know, hmm? as a woman, what your opinion is. Yeah, you're a woman. <laughs> I'm very torn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the one hand, Russ is a decent guy. He's a he's a keeper, and uh, he he he's not going to stray. And if you if you if you don't let him have a little bit of space or go to his cave or Vegas or whatever they want to call it <laughs> in the books. Um, you know, it might be an issue. He might resent you. It might hurt what's happening between you two guys. And I think you have to choose your battles and maybe... But I still think, I think that Lisa is not so worried about trust. She trusts him. It's clear that she trusts him. Mm -hmm. What she's saying is, let's not start our relationship, our life together on this where you're going to be able to go out and look at whoever and... But I don't think he is. But, I, okay, but I why should he put himself in that position? He shouldn't be putting himself he's, into a position like that He's going to see his time. brother, though. Don't oh, you yeah, see? Yeah, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, <laughs> say no more. <laughs> Sure, you know, he's going to see his brother. These yeah. guys are always going to be in situations where other guys are doing stuff that some guys aren't doing. And that's yeah. just something guys do. I think there was a book called something. that, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah. You and know what? This is a very <laughs> normal amount of fear in a premarital situation. All the other stuff, all the nervousness and the paranoia about being married uh, is swirling around in there. And I, I, I really do understand her feeling. You, that's you, what I you meant know to what say. I want to ask, if I may? When you kids do get hitched, is Russ going to have a bachelor party? Yeah. Hello. Ah. Um, if and I, I bet you they're not going to just play Monopoly. Mm. <laughs> if I had a bachelor party, I would not want to be put in that situation because it seems like the person who is in the active role, the groom to be, is in a really peer pressure situation. It's they not shove so him much right in the, the center of the strippers. Stuff. They just shove him right exactly. in there. Exactly. I would like to have a bachelor party where I get together with my friends and hang out for a weekend and go out drinking and maybe go to Vegas and gamble and stuff like that, but I would not want to have any of those. But Can everybody says that. Yeah. The, the last bachelor party you went to, the guy said, no strippers, my wife will kill me. And then everybody's like, okay, everyone pitch in for the stripper. Yeah, but, but that guy's not, not Russ. It's the same no. friends. It's the same group of <laughs> but, friends. But yeah. Yeah. Those friends Russ, are too. going to say, it's hey, Russ, aren't you going to have the stripper? They're going to prod him. They're going to push him. They're going to want him to have really strippers. And Russ is going to say, just say no to strippers. Yeah, yeah. Russ is running for political office, I think. You know what, though? I'll tell you what, I understand point because you know something else bachelorette party there, there's no fluid exchange at a bachelorette party they, they go well, out for a couple of drinks yeah. really. the am, thing am is I right? too the truth right. is right. in we my opinion giggle. and maybe this sounds goofy but uh, <laughs> none of my friends would want to put me in that position because they wouldn't want to hurt me and they wouldn't want to hurt him I don't understand how it's a friendship thing to possibly hurt a relationship that to me isn't being a friend that's that's being a guy. The, a guy. But That's for being those, the opposite. But for of a those friend. other just... guys who have done that, it's more like uh, everybody get in the same boat so that nobody can sell anybody out. Right. So I the mean, guys who've well, done it are going to want but, you to do it at your back. Okay, everybody. Brush. This is a chance to see if there's been any shift in opinion in uh, our studio audience voting. This is your second chance to hit those electronic devices right in front of your seat. Can't wait to see if there's been a slight shift with the advocacy of the three couch members. We'll do that. Plus, offer the three solutions when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Everybody, 
welcome back. There's been a shift. There's been a there's a shift in the wind. We, we have this is interesting. In our first vote, poll number one, 30 percent of the audience sided with Lisa and 70 percent with Russ. Now we have a split decision. It's 50 50. Yeah. So Lisa was able to convince a couple of people of the depth of her soul and uh, the purity of her thought. Rock on, sister. Yeah. With a little help from. <laughs> okay, yeah. this is the part of the show that may do everyone some good. The solution segment. So James, what do you think they should do here? Can can this be fixed? Uh, I think it could be fixed, and I, I think that Russ should just step up to the plate as the guy, the new husband, and not go, and, and not put that stuff in front of him. Stop? So I think, yeah, that stuff, we'll call it, okay. for right now, for, for TV. I mm. don't think he should go. I think he should not subject himself. Okay, don't go. Avoid temptation. Yes. Ice. I disagree with that. I, he mm. wants to go. He wants to see his brother. Uh, obviously, he, you, he needs to go, and you know what? He needs to go. <laughs> Call Lisa. Ooh, Call don't Lisa. live your life vicariously through our guests. Yeah. <laughs> Call Lisa from Vegas. Say, hey, I just want you to know this is what I'm doing tonight. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> that would be a comforting right. call to get. Okay, go, but periodically call to reassure exactly. her. Okay, I, exactly. Okay, uh, yeah. Bring her. And put her up the MGM Grand. Wow. That'll be cool. Yeah, and yeah, then the guys when you're will done, like you know, when you wrap it up with the fellas, you know, at 4 a.m. or whatever. You come home to your little lady there. Yeah, and she's in there with a bellhop. You know what that's called? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Russ and Lisa, here are your three solutions. Funky Russ fun doesn't fun. go. He, he tries to avoid temptation and, and, and takes away the threat. And uh, we have uh, also, he goes, but he calls periodically to reassure her in her delicate state. And the third <laughs> one is, she goes to Las Vegas with him. Perhaps you put her up in an adjacent hotel within telescope distance <laughs> and, you know, run back and forth between acts or whatever it is. <laughs> anyway, you have the three, and I hope you're able to reach a solution, but on the show it isn't absolutely necessary. We just want you to communicate, to talk, all right? You'll do that offstage in our soundproof booth right. where we have snacks and security guards. Thank you, Thank you so much. For <laughs> I always thought that the term bachelor party was like a technicality. What makes it a bachelor party is like a cake and gifts. You take away the cake and gifts, it's ten guys and a hooker. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gentleman's club. Not it's an X-rated coffee clash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, here is the part where we really get the wisdom on any given show, and that is to talk to some of our audience members. We're going to do that right now. Would you please stand, attractive lady? What is your name? Marianne. How you doing, Marianne? Good, thanks. So you've heard the three solutions, and, and which one do you think they should adopt? Or if neither of those uh, 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 pleases you, which one? Do you, what do you think they should do? I honestly think that he shouldn't go, because if he really cares for her, he would, like, not go and just stay at home with her. And if he wants to see his brother, hey, there's Thanksgiving. There's that one guy again. <laughs> you, you can fringe of humanity over there. So thank you very much for helping us out today. We appreciate thank you being you. here. Would you stand? Can I talk to you, too? Hi. What, what do you think they should do? Um, I've got to agree. I don't think you should go either. I, I'll, yeah. I'm with Lisa. I don't understand the logic of looking at naked women to celebrate <laughs> your uh, your marriage. Don't get it. <laughs> you go. Because for a young unmarried man who has no experience, it's like monogamy without the possibility of parole. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of his life. So you think he should, uh, uh, they, they should adopt number one as well. Mm -hmm. And what is your name? Amy. And where are you from, Amy? Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. All right. Those are the three solutions. Right now, the uh, newly engaged are back there negotiating in a room off stage. We'll come back and find out if they were able to reach a solution. And we're going to offer them some surprise gifts to sort of facilitate their reunion. We'll do that and have the couch quickies when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you very much. back everybody we always try to read the faces of the participants when they come back and I try to read Lisa's face and it's a non-committal expression it's like the soap opera actresses have just before a commercial break perhaps the <laughs> eyebrow goes up you can't tell is she disturbed is she elated is she afraid what is it that's the tease to come back after the commercial break which I hope worked in this instance but you're holding hands that's a good sign so Lisa were you able to reach agreement on one of the solutions um yeah uh, <laughs> I I'm, I think he should just go, and I I'd appreciate oh. a call or two, but um, I'm going to 
just deal well, good with for it. You. Pretty yeah. good. Well, she came a good distance forward. And, and you know, it really is wonderful of her uh, uh, having had some some uh, unpleasant back experience with men to sort of give you the clean slate. That's a good healthy start in a mm -hmm. marriage. Good for you. It sounds great. Well, we also would like to offer you to celebrate your uh, celebrate your marriage uh, a weekend at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. This would be an yeah. 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 Very romantic. This would be at a non bachelor party weekend, so you can just have some fun and pay attention to one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen, oh. you're a great couple, and Thank you're going to make attractive children. I'm very certain. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Great. Right. Good to see you. All right. We'll see you guys again. Russ and Lisa, everybody. Up next, is it okay for a married woman to have a male friend online? You come home and you notice that your spouse is spending more and more time on the computer. But then you find out the reason why they're on the computer all the time is they've made a new online friend. <laughs> now here's the question, can what goes on through a modem threaten your marriage? We're about to find out with Beth and John, okay? Oh, we Say hello to John. Right John, come on out. How you doing, sir? Uh, good right. to see you. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, first of all, how long have you been married? We've been married for five years. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so. and, and a good marriage so far? Up until we got a computer. <laughs> okay. wow. So no preliminary problems that may explain? I don't think so. I haven't seen any. Well, do you ever hear moaning coming from the computer <laughs> room? or what? You know, those good guys aren't so good, I guess. Aren't they? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's just on the computer. And she's made a friend. And what, she's what made a friend. Well, what's his name? Kurt. 380. Have you yeah. read the messages? <laughs> and what's, uh, what's that, the 380? Is that Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on a second. So wait a minute. So what you're saying is she's online and she's doing email back and forth with somebody she just found in a chat room? Or? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Every night. You come home from well, work, she's in her little computer Yeah, world. she's in her little world. And what does she talk Kurt. to him about? What is she talking to this guy about that she's not talking to you about? Talking about a meeting. What is that? I mean, the gonna, two of them meeting get together? Two, the two of them were about, you know, they're ready to meet up. Have Whoa. you confronted uh, her with this? I had, didn't think it was a problem, but now I don't even get to spend time with my wife. Well, what, you could email her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, could get, you yeah. could get your own computer and find a friend named Slut160. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know. All right, hold it. Before we pass judgment, though, uh -huh. so is she communicating sexual stuff to him? or You know, it didn't look like it, but the fact that she wants to meet up with him, um, you know. Did she say, I want to meet, or did he? He read the message. That. Yeah. yeah, I know, but I mean, you, so you don't know. I don't know for sure. But do you okay. feel like you're spending enough time with her? Are you giving her enough attention? Sure. I think, well, I try to. I get home, hey, honey, how was your day? When do you get home? Fine. Or do you work late? Do you, do you have things that you do at night sometimes? Well, I have, I'm in a softball league, yeah. you know. And, you know, I've invited her to go, but she's like, Typing. So you have the time to put in in a relationship, but you're not putting it in together. You're doing softball. How many nights a week? Two nights a week. Before the computer, <laughs> would you come home and just turn on the TV and, and not have a lot to say to her? No. I have always Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, bottom line. Here's the bottom line. Do you feel like she's violating your, the, the, you know, the spirit of your marriage by being on with this guy? Do you feel like she's, in a way... Absolutely. Of, she, you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to get her side of the story, too, but we appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. John, if you'll step off, we'll say hello to Beth. So tell us about Kurt 380. <laughs> <laughs> he is so over exaggerating. I mean, this is just a person I met. John is never home. He has joined the softball league with the guys, and he's never home. And so I'm stuck at home doing nothing, waiting for him. And you know, I I'm not gonna sit there and wait. So. So well, tell us about Kurt. What's yeah, what are, you, what are you he, talking to this guy about? He's just a friend that I met on the local chat room, and it's just we had a few things in common. And what type of chat room? Future adulterers? No, <laughs> just a local <laughs> chat room. No. Well, if, you, if, you, if you never met him, right? No, never. How can you be sure he's not a seven-foot Russian woman? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, that's true. That's true. But I mean, he just seems, you know, pretty well-rounded, and we've yeah, talked about a lot. Yeah, you know, let, let's let's remember Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> Do you, you know, talk computer? about personal things that you normally should be talking to your yeah. husband about? Well, I mean, we talk about, I talk about John. I mean, he knows that I'm married and, Yeah, you know. but that might not affect this guy. Maybe you don't know, is he married? 
No. Is he looking for a relationship? Well, he's looking, but he hasn't had any success. So you know enough of that. Uh, you know enough yeah. about you know him. That you know a lot about him. She can't be responsible for his but feelings, but she's been honest enough to say that she, she, she's she been forthcoming about her marriage and that she just wants a friendship. Yeah. Is it? Would you consider this a platonic Just a onside? platonic friendship. I mean, well, what I think about he's, meeting? Yeah, you're going to meet him? We've been discussing it because we live you know, in the same area. That's and trouble, lady. We thought about meeting up in Starbucks, but no. it's, it's you, so innocent, and I just think John is totally overreacting. Well, would you take John to meet him with you at the Starbucks? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, so, it's so innocent. I don't think they would get along. I don't oh, think yeah. that they uh -huh. would Does, really. Is he fulfilling then, uh, you say you don't think they get along, are they not alike then? Is he like a, They're a, a little soft, different. gentleman? They have a lot in common, they both like you. Yeah. Yeah. No, Kurt I wants you. Come I don't on, honey. Think so. I don't oh. think so. No, but you know what? That would represent the truth of the situation to Kurt 380, so he doesn't misunderstand your feelings about it. That would be the honest thing to do. Why don't you do it? I think he knows that I'm not interested in him in that way. Uh, you know, let me ask you this. Um, John said that he's invited you to go out and watch his softball games, and you've just totally he not even He is so full of it. He's so full of it. He says, you know, oh, you can come watch us if you want, but well, like, what's wrong like, with that? Well, like, I mean, like, like, like you can invitation. come if you want to, but I, I've you know, really that. don't want you there because he's there with the guys. So, you know, why, <laughs> why would I want to go for that? Because, no, no, because no, you want to be with your husband, but, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, but, but I like to, you know, I don't want to go sit and watch but, him but, play but softball. But none, none, none of the guys bring their wives or girlfriends, that, you know, the people, more other people you can hang out with and meet and Usually go out later. Usually they don't. That gets in the way of her having time with Kurt. Not go on the computer and play with some other guy's mouse. We're going to a commercial now. This is the first opportunity for our audience to register which side of the fence they find themselves in this dispute between Beth and John, and we're going to have the audience find out how the couch feels. Is Beth doing something wrong? Is John just overreacting? Find out when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> your spouse and your mother-in-law speak Spanish all the time. There's only one problem. You don't understand a word they're saying. Her. Well, they speak Spanish all the time in front of me, and I think it's about me. It's only a thing out of convenience. Uh, when my mother speaks to me in Spanish. You guys need subtitles. Yeah, what would happen if you spoke French? <laughs> we don't know any I'm just French. saying pick up French, all three of you. What, what do you got, do you guys ever talk about things? <laughs> he tells me that it's, they're, they're talking, this is the way they bond and it has nothing to do with me, mm -hmm. but I hear things. Well, you do know, you hear I, the word loca and then they laugh and point? <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a bad sign. <laughs> Tuesday on the couch. Welcome back to the couch, everybody. We have John and Beth, a man, his wife, and their computer. <laughs> Menage a mouse. <laughs> you know, the truth is that there, there are women all over the world whose husbands think they're online playing Tetris with someone from New Zealand. <laughs> so at least she's revealing to him the truth of this situation. Yeah. I want to give you a poll here because you'll, you'll be interested to find out who the audience is in camp with here. First of all, 85% of the audience feels that they agree with John's position on this so far. That's all right. Two more opportunities to change that. And Beth, 15%. But that may change when the... And that's Kurt. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Reveal Kurt thyself. 80. And uh, Couch, this is a really interesting question. And, and I'll bet this discussion goes on in families all over America. What constitutes cheating? Um, well, I mean, honestly... I think this is wrong. Quite honestly, I think that, look, you respect the bounds of, of marriage and you don't share intimate things and talkings with somebody outside of your it's marriage. A That's what you're yeah, violation. Yeah, 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 you're still allowed. Yeah. 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 But, 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 you're, you can still have a friend within reason. I'm not saying, yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that, that you should you're not, not saying be anything, discussing, right? you should not be, <laughs> that you should not be talking to people on the internet. I, I think that you can do that within reason, but I, you know, I'm kind of worried that she's retreating into a little bubble here. Exactly, and, and that's and why not, you shouldn't do it. And she's not allowing John to prick it, so to speak. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> but that's why you can't do that. Weezy, get in on this. No, she's gone beyond what is emotionally healthy within a relationship. There's betrayal of, of a physical kind, and there's a betrayal of an emotional kind, and I think that this is an emotional betrayal. She's be becoming attached. She may even be in love with uh, Kurt. Yeah, and, 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 and she can say she isn't all she wants, but how do we know? Yeah. She's still spending more time talking yeah. to this guy on the computer. She's, she's I agree making, with both she's of making you. a and substitution. I'll tell you else. There's, there's this fake sense of safety in that you're not facing the guy, yeah. and you're more likely to reveal more of your true feelings that way, and that's the violation. Or catch a computer virus. See? <laughs> and we're, we're all always looking for that, 
that, you know, the newness of when our relationship was new. And that, that's probably very innocently what she was looking for, but the I think it's, it's very wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. she's looking, ob obviously there's, there's no connection between husband and wife. She's looking for some sort of a substitution. Yeah, there, but that's know? not that's not the answer to it. The answer is to turn back towards each other. Yes. I think the answer is 47. I don't see why I can't have male friends. And I mean, if he had female friends, I'd be fine with but that. But this is you wouldn't, lady. Uh, this, uh, yeah. You don't I even would. know that this is a male friend. It could be, yeah, right? It could be anybody. No, he, he, it could be a 12 year old. Have you seen a picture of him? Has he sent you pictures? Yes. Well, see, that also should indicate that he's wanting something a little bit more from you than just friendship. Yeah. He's sending you pictures. Get, he wants to meet with you. He's looking no. for someone to press his enter button. That's what's going yeah. on. Here. You don't get that vibe, but your husband does, and your husband's a guy. Maybe he sees something you don't. Well, how can I see anything? He's never yeah. home. I he's never home. home. I get, Hold it. Let's let John talk. Go ahead. Look, I get home. She's on the computer. That's it. I've asked, you look at it. okay, fine, I play softball two days a week. Oh, I've asked. Does your life with John bore you? No. <laughs> let him, let him, let him start. finish making He's his out two, two days. Two, oh, how Wallet can you tell? Two. How can you tell? You're on the computer. You don't even notice when I walk in the door. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, Does she I make dinner? Do. Where's dinner? No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, wait a minute. John says that he makes formal requests with you to go out and socialize, have dinner, go out and face one another, and you reject that. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah. I mean, I would love to go out, but he says, where do you want to go? He doesn't ever plan anything, so... It's John, how many times a week do you ask her to do something away from the computer? Two or three times. And how many times a week you reject his... Uh, oh, that's not true. Uh, maybe every once in a while. And usually it's because I have something else going on. I'm meeting a girlfriend. It's and because it's you've like, got mail. Yeah. 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 The problem is it's a mail. Busy. She doesn't know. No. That and I mean, I'm not what? always talking to Kurt. And he just assumes it's Oh, there's somebody else? Well, who else should I, he assume it is? There's somebody else. No. Do you guys still love each other? Are you, oh, are you still as happy as you were when you got married? Well, of look course. Look at them. Look at You said you're going to go meet the guy. But it's no big deal. No big deal. For you, you maybe. You have girlfriends at work, I, girls who are friends. Do I type up with them and do all that? I no. don't know what you do with them when you're oh, at work. Oh, no. I know. Typing, typing up, up. Wow. <laughs> Me and you are typing up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you one final question. Before this computer came into your relationship, what did you do at night? Did you communicate? Did you talk? Did you go to movies? Did you read? Yeah, we sure, we spent Just to send smoke signals to some guy. <laughs> <laughs> No. Was it was it like the Brady Bunch? You sat in bed together and talked about <laughs> no, the day we and would, stuff. We'd come home and or we'd go out to dinner and go to movie. We did a lot more stuff, but but don't you see he's reaching you know out and trying to get it's some a, of that back right now? It's more he's more sarcastic about it. Mm. It feels like the Ricardos separate beds. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, everybody, we're going to poll our audience for the second time now. See if there's been a shift in opinion. When we come back, the couch is going to offer some solutions. Stay tuned, please. <laughs> to the couch. Don't you guys think this is going to be a big issue between married couples? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I know that somewhere in Beverly Hills there's an attorney who's trying to figure a way to <laughs> sue Netscape <laughs> for the dissolution of a marriage on behalf of his client, the female. He only handles yeah. internet problems. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. The chat man. Oh, there, there he is. All right, well, we, we've taken our second poll. And uh, this time, well, it's just not looking good. 99% uh, of our audience oh. agrees with John. I'm so sorry. Kurt that, left. And 1%, 1%, 1 percent, 1 percent, 1 percent for Beth. <laughs> and if what, after what was the that show, percentage again? one percent. Okay. But Beth isn't supposed to vote. Which I think breaks down to <laughs> one half of a person in our audience. Okay. <laughs> and if you'd like to reveal who you are, she'd like to be your online pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the important part of the show, solutions. Is there any way these folks can uh, make this work? James, what no. do you think? I, I think, I think, Wheezy, they can. Oh, okay. Um, no, I think that what you both need to do is stop, stop the softball, stop the online, get together, and spend some time together. Compromise. Every night of the week? Well, at least four yeah. nights of the week. Mm. You know, they say that marriages that last should have at least 10 hours together. Okay, spend more time together. Rice, what do you think? I'm going to work off of that. I don't think that it's fair for John to give up softball completely, and I don't think it's fair for, uh, for Beth to give up online friends completely. I think what they need to do, get out the day planner of love, <laughs> and yeah, like baby. on Monday, and find a night or two nights during the week where they can say, you know what, these are our nights. No friends, no softball, just us. Weez? Well, I, you know, I think something good w can be able to have come from this, if that was a sentence at all, yes. and <laughs> with a comma, and I'll keep going. Uh, but, you know, like maybe you've improved your typing, 
Um, but, <laughs> but, and, but I think if you get a crush, a little crush outside the marriage, it can teach you what you need more of inside the marriage. And I think Kurt's got to go. Look at your husband. Yeah. Anyway, those are the three, okay. and you'll have an opportunity to negotiate a little bit off stage, and we'll come back and see you in a few minutes and see if you've had an opportunity to, uh, to uh, make a decision. Go ahead, guys. Let's get around the right? Okay, everybody, here's an opportunity for us to learn what the audience thinks. Would you please stand, attractive lady? Oh. <laughs> I have a special affinity for a woman with eyewear. Oh. <laughs> now, what is your name? My name's Sandra. So, Sandra, which do you think they should adopt? Definitely, I agree with the panel. Where there's love, there's hope, and where there's hope, there's love. So definitely they do need to work things out. Um, there does seem that there's some, some love there. I'm so they need to negotiate, spend some time to negotiate and get their relationship yeah, back together. Yeah, they need to hold hands. Perfect. That's a good point. Here or? Here. They okay. need to hold hands here. And well, you we'll suggest they do that as soon as they much. come back. Oh, there we go. That's good. Well, maybe she's got <laughs> carpal tunnel syndrome and can't hold hands. <laughs> or he's been holding the bat too long. Thank you. Hello. Oh. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Step up, sir. Could I get you? How you doing? What's your name? My name's Tim. Tim, wh which do you think they should adopt? Well, I, I kind of like what James said. And yeah. uh, I also think that, you know, I mean, if, if I was, uh, what was the other guy's name? Was John. It? If I was John, I wouldn't necessarily, I'd kind of shut down too a little bit. Yeah. Would you be jealous? Would you be suspect under these circumstances? Sure. I mean, it's not the fact that she's on line with some other guy so much as the fact that she's doing something that she would rather be doing than be with him. Exactly. Mm. And you know what? Ooh, it's tough for John because good. he can't face the enemy. He can't even see the opposing party, and that probably plays on his paranoia a little bit, too. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. All right, when we come back, folks, we'll see if a decision has been reached right here on the couch. Stay tuned. John and Beth, you had a chance to discuss the three. Did any of those seem like uh, an area where you may reach agreement? You know what? I bought that computer. I'll take it back. Oh, <laughs> Whoa. John, come on. You know, he's, he's all show. But we <laughs> talked about that. Wow. Oh, uh, now we're getting to the root of the problem. It's too late. <laughs> the solutions have already been offered. I mean, if, if it'll make him happy for me to stop talking to him, then I will. Because he's more important. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Oh. All right, so you actually did a combination. Well, uh, you, you took Wheezy's solution. Very good, the last one. Very good. Well, you know what? That's terrific. It's a great walk forward, and you uh, are being sensitive to his feelings, and, and then you'll have more opportunities to, to really work on the other two. Exactly. And it's always fun for you to learn who in the audience sort of took sides with the various solutions. 25% of the audience agreed with James. Both need to stop and uh, spend more time together. 50% agreed with Iceman, who... Uh, <laughs> Do you blame him? <laughs> Just because no. he's cute. Yeah, that's right. And 25% agree with Wheezy, which is, in fact, the one you decided on. And we appreciate you being here. And listen, we'd like to uh, facilitate your, your, uh, your uh, happy future, and we're going to do it this way. We're going to give you a weekend communication workshop. <laughs> <laughs> now, please accept this in the spirit in which it's given. This is, you know, counseling is good for all couples, whether they're happy or whether they're not happy. This is with Dr. John Gray in Napa Valley, who doesn't <laughs> work with people who are necessarily troubled. It just uh, brings out the brightness in every relationship, and I hope, you, I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot from it. And we're going to give you a pair of tickets to uh, the musical version of Jekyll and Hyde. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And that isn't to suggest anything that we feel about your particular relationship. It just is that we want you to have a Broadway sort of fun night. Okay. Thank you so Thank much you for being much. here. We appreciate it. So John, Thank thanks you. so much. Good to see you. All right, everybody. This might be the most fun part of the program. We like to follow up on our guests to see how things are going a period of time later. You might remember Marty and Abe that were here a couple of weeks ago. Marty didn't want Abe dating his sister. Take a look. I'm just saying, I'm, I don't understand why you want to quash the possibility of our happiness. I don't know why that... I, th it's ridiculous that you're saying happiness. What do you mean? Th 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 you know you. You, you, you <laughs> go and you play. You have you met you, Abe, Abe, You've Abe, even right. bragged to me how you. many <laughs> Thanks, women man. you went out with. He'll come in you know, our dorm room and he'll be like, 
Oh, there's another one I got rid of. Just like nothing. God, That's so oh, not yeah. true. I, I mean, think it's interesting. Only a female would ask a guy to promise on monogamy <laughs> and have any sense that he would follow through on his promise. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to start yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Okay, it's so much fun to do this. You guys remember very well that Abe promised monogamy in this relationship, mm -hmm. and nobody at the end of the show thought he'd stick to it. I'm here yeah. to say monogamy stuck. Cindy and Abe are now engaged, and they're getting married wow. in June. No way. So once again, the couch rock. <laughs> once again, we've proven that we solved the world's problems two people at a time. Thanks for being here, James, Thanks. Ice, and Breezy. We'll see you next time. Thank you for being here. We'll see you on the couch. Tell it to the couch. Lay it on the couch now, baby. If you got money problems over cheap subscribers, just tell it. Tell it to the couch. Tell it to the couch. Your brother comes to visit you for a month. That was four months ago. He started bringing home ladies late at night, which isn't cool. And I'll get these calls like uh, 12.31 in the morning. And I'll be like, hey, Jer, what's up, dude? <laughs> and then I'll be, I met this fly chick over in Hermosa. So he always goes down to the pier. You two understand each other? <laughs> <laughs> and why hasn't he gone back? Uh, he was going to go back to school in September, and he's now postponed that till until he has sex with every woman in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Now, how many nights a week do you say you pick up one of these honeys and, t and, c and call your brother and say, get out, because uh, I'm going to be, you know, doing the Humpty Dance? I haven't done it for like two weeks, three weeks. Oh, oh whoa. Man. How are you? Are you all right? <laughs> you know, Luke, there are plenty of places to have sex. I mean, just ask President Clinton. Uh, you oh. Thursday on the couch. Now here's a heated custody battle. When a couple breaks up, who gets the dog? I basically raised Reggie, and um, he's my dog, he's my baby, and so I think I should have him. I love Reggie. She's trying to make it seem as though I don't love her. I love like Reggie. Like a weekend dad. Then, I won't scoop the poop, but I'm saying. Well, if you wait a second, if you won't scoop it, then who does? We don't have to scoop the poop. He's in the yard. Well, no, yeah, the oh, so the oh, it's, that's lovely. What are you talking about? You Join us on a couch tomorrow. Maybe you'll find some change under the cushions. He's her ex, and he's hitting on every friend she has. So how did the friends react? One of them said, who is that obnoxious guy who kept on picking up on me? First of all, I have real no line. I just walk up and introduce myself like a human being, go, hi, my name is Lance, what's yours? Yeah, that would make me flee. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to a party and you see a pretty girl, you don't approach her? No, I don't. <laughs> if there's, uh, uh, Quite honestly, I, I'd like to like get a little bit of his DNA because he's not affected by anything. I want to put that into cologne and wear that. I want to go out. I want to. Hi, James, you're a jerk. Thank you. I know that. Doesn't bother me. Let me just go. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Nothing affects it. I love Lance. Lance is my man. Hello, Friday on the couch. <laughs>